What's up, fantasy managers? I want to talk about the big guys up front because they should eat their cake too. The offensive line is important for your fantasy players to score points. I have the week eight offensive line report that you should know about. I know you're interested, so stick around for seven seconds. The information I have can help you decide your own tiebreakers on whether who to start or who to sit. The advantage in the trenches will give you the advantage over your league mates. I have three players you want to target. I have three players you want to avoid. All this information is on PFF. I subscribe to it so you don't have to, and I will relay this message to you starting with my notes right now. All right, here we go. And my notes, the first team that we want to talk about is the Buccaneers offensive line versus the Atlanta Falcons. The Buccaneers offensive line owns a 76.6 pass blocking grade. That's the seventh best in the NFL. While allowing just a 19.6% pressure rate, that ranks the fourth best in the NFL. Now, the Falcons defensive line has managed just a 55.4 pass grade rush, which ranks 31st, that's second from the last, while their 30% pressure rate ranks 25th in the league. What am I saying here? The Falcons defensive line cannot get to the quarterback because they're bad. The Buccaneers' offensive line is keeping pressure away from Baker Mayfield because they're good. And one of the players this will benefit is third-round rookie Jalen McMillan. And the reason why this benefits him is because they have no other options as a wide receiver. Also, Baker Mayfield is going to have a lot of time in the pocket. And this is not good for me because I had Baker Mayfield as my gamble of the week to sit him because of the lack of options. Remember, the last time they played against... Atlanta, it was a shootout, but Baker Mayfield only had 180 yards. They were able to do the damage elsewhere, but he is the number one person that this is going to benefit. Now, Baker Mayfield is quarterback two on the season, and many are hesitant, including me, to want to start this guy. Like I said, this guy was my gamble of the week, but apparently I made a bad choice because this is saying that he should have a decent game. However, Mayfield's significant advantage in the trenches should give him plenty of time to operate and put his receiving options to good use and week eight. So technically, all the wide receivers or the lack there are wide receivers, if you're given enough time that make a Baker Mayfield is going to get, you're going to get open and he's going to find you. On non-pressure dropbacks, Mayfield has thrown in 17 touchdown passes. That's five more than any other quarterback in the league. Mayfield has also made eight big time throws from clean pockets. That's tied for second most. Mayfield may not have his top five upside this week because he doesn't have Chris Godwin, RIP, Mike Evans. I'll see you soon, brother. But the right matchup should allow him and his second tier receiving corp still to provide startable fantasy value for this week. And so if you're starting Baker Mayfield, this is saying that you could be safe. He's not going to have his upside, but you could play him as to be safe. And then the second offensive line that we want to go after is the San Francisco 49ers versus the Dallas Cowboys. The 49ers offensive line owns a 72.4 pass blocking grade. That's 13th this season. The Cowboys defensive line has also been average to below average in terms of pressure rate at 34.9% and quick pressure rate at 20%, which ranks the 16th and 25th overall in the league. And the 49ers offensive line has earned the second best run blocking grade of 81.3 on the season while generating a 1.7 rushing yards before contact per attempt. That's the third best in the season for offensive lines. And the Cowboys defensive line has managed just a 36.9 run defense grade this season. That ranks all the way in the 30th. And they allow 1.7 rushing yards before contact per attempt. That is the fifth worst mark. So you're going against, you have the best offensive line who's getting a lot of push, going against the worst defensive line who's getting pushed on. They're getting bullied. Now, obviously, this is going to benefit Brock Purdy because he's going to give him more time to uh, throw the ball. I mean, even though his clean pocket completion percentage is... 28th overall, that's not his best. He does a lot of his damage um, under pressure. He's pressure completion percentage is ninth best, but I don't want to spend too much time on this because I just found out Jawan Jennings is out for the game. But, I mean, maybe you can substitute this with Ricky Pearsell because this is a whole PFF article of how uh, Jawan Jennings is going to do well against the Cowboys. I mean, Brock Purdy's got to throw it to somebody. Debo Samuel is not a 15-catch, 20-target guy. So also, there's a misprint here. Sorry about that, but it's supposed to say Dallas. Micah Parsons is also out, so that's less pressure that Purdy's going to get. On non-pressure dropbacks, Jennings leads the entire 49ers offense with a 28.9% target rate, and Jennings also leads the team in yards per route run with 3.71 on non-pressure dropbacks. So this game was meant for Jawan Jennings, but Brendan IU gone for the season. 
but he's out. So maybe Ricky Parasol could take his place and do well this week. Could be a sleeper if you think about it. And the third guy I want to target to light up your fantasy roster. We're going to stay in the same game. It's going to be running back Jordan Mason. So even though Jordan Mason, the last 10 games in full PPR, he hasn't been able to score over 10 points. This should be a backup game for him or bounce back game for him. When given at least one rushing yard before contact, Mason averages 8.1 yards per carry, and that's the ninth best in the league. Among those same qualifiers, Mason's rushing grade is 92.9, and that ranks third best in the league as he's delivered more explosive runs, 18, than any other back in those same situations. Mason's first down touchdown rate is 38%, also ranks 13th in the league. This is just set up for him to have an explosive game. And speaking of explosive games, he's number one in explosive rating for runs. His breakaway runs, he's number two. His evaded tackles is number two. His juke rate, which is kind of like missed tackles force per, per attempt, is uh, 13th overall. Yards per touch, 5.5. He's 14th overall. So, yeah, he's been having a bad game, but he is set up to have a great matchup because of the line, how much of a push they could have on the Cowboys. The, you know, what I say earlier, they average 1.7 yards before contact and the Cowboys allow 1.7 yards per contact. So he's almost going to have two yards before he's even going to have a hand on him. And according to this, if he gets that one yard with no touches, he has an explosive rate, which is one of the best in the league. So he should have a bounce back game and he should light up your fantasy roster this week. Yo, if you made it this far and if you're enjoying the information that I am giving you about the offensive line report for week eight, then please hit the subscribe and press the like. It goes a long way. We have a goal to reach 1,500 subscribers by the end of the football season. We can't do it without you. We appreciate all you zoners. Everything and anything goes a long way. Thank you for watching. Now let's do a 180 and let's talk about the offensive lines that you want to avoid, the players that you want to avoid, that you want to ice out from your lineups. And the first matchup that, we want, that I'm going to talk about is Seattle's offensive line against the Buffalo Bills. The Seattle Seahawks offensive line ranks just 25th this season in pass blocking grade at 59.9. They allowed the third highest pressure rate of 34.9%. Buffalo's defensive line has earned the sixth best pass rush grade at 75.1 and generated a 24.6% quick pressure rate, which ranks 11. So they get to the quarterback fast and Seattle's offensive line can't stop it. And who is this going to affect? Of course, it's going to affect the wide receivers because how are they going to get the ball if the quarterback has continued to be in pressure? But the number one person that this will affect is, of course, quarterback Geno Smith from the Seattle Seahawks. And of course, it's going to affect Geno Smith. Why is this going to affect Geno Smith? It's because if he's getting pressured, his pressure completion percentage is outside of the top 20, which is not good. And Geno Smith has been doing well as a streamer option for the most weeks, but this is just not a good matchup for him. Unfortunately, when pressured this season, Smith is tied for the league lead in interceptions with six. Pressured has accounted for all of Smith's interceptions this season, including five turnover-worthy plays. That is fourth most for his position. This is a very bad matchup for his offensive line, for the trenches, for the Seattle. The overall matchup could be pretty bad. The Bills' defense allows the 10th fewest fantasy points per game to quarterback to begin with. And that right there should lower Geno Smith's average or output for this week. If you can, I would try to ice this guy out out of your lineup for week eight. Now let's go to the second team that we want to try to avoid. And it's the Steelers offensive line versus the New York Giants. Yes, I said that. The New York Giants. The Steelers offensive line ranks just 24th in pass blocking grade this season at 60.1. And the Giants defensive line ranks 8th in pass rushing grade at 74.3. And generating a 38.7% pressure rate and 26.2% Quick pressure rate. And after an offseason where I thought the Steelers offensive line has improved, I actually have Jalen Warren as my fantasy EVP because I thought the offensive line was going to be great. It was going to be great in the run game. It has not. And now it's even suffering another loss. Their backup center, Zach Frazier, he did not participate in practice on Thursday. I don't know if he did. This is Friday. I don't know if he did on Friday. But if he does a play, that's another missing key, missing link to the offensive line going up against the Giants defensive line who has a defensive tackle named Dexter Lawrence who is leading the league in sacks with nine I'm telling you man do not sleep on the Giants defense they have really improved on the Steelers offensive line still sucks so if we're looking at players that you want to try to avoid who you want to try to like ice out of your lineups one of the players I'm thinking about are the running backs Najee Harris he's been doing great I actually have him ranked pretty low this uh this week and it also impacts our quarterback Russell Wilson of course but the number one person who this affects and it sucks. This is the second week in a row that they have this guy that you wanted to ice out. And I had a start him last week. He only got seven points. So I totally understand where this is coming from. And they're saying to do it again, that you want to ice this guy out, out of your lineup. And it's tied in Pat Fairmove. And this is the thing with Pat Fairmove. Like if you look at his catchy metrics, they're all pretty good. 
But there's one that really stands out, and his yards per route run is 20th, which means he is actually running more routes than he actually is catching balls. We want him to catch footballs. He is not catching footballs. And the reason why is because on pressure dropbacks, Fairmuth is seeing just a 11.4% target rate, which ranks fifth on the team, compared to his 17.4% target rate on non-pressure quarterbacks. So when he's when the quarterback is not getting pressured, he definitely gets targets. The quarterback's going to get pressured a lot in this game. Russell Wilson's sample size this season is still small, but historically, he's invited more pressure than the average quarterback, even leading the league in that regard last season at 24.3%. He'll likely get the fair share of pressure again this week, coming from the Giants' defensive line, so it doesn't look well for Pat Fairmuth if he can. Like I said, they had this for last week too, and he didn't perform. I think he only had seven points. It was like two catches for 50 yards. So if you can, ice this guy out. I cannot. And the third and final offensive line that we're going to try to avoid for week eight is, you know what, let's just stay in the same game. I mean, this game between the Giants and the Steelers, you know, they're only, the over and under in, in that game is 36.5. That's one of the lowest. So there's not expected to be a lot of points scored in this. But let's talk about the Giants offensive line versus the Steelers defensive line. The Giants offensive line ranks just 25th and run blocking grade at 59.7 as it generates just a 1.0 rushing yards before contact per attempt which ranks 29th. That's the bottom of the barrel. The Steelers' defensive line has earned the second-best run defensive grade at 72.9, allowing just 1.1 rushing yards before contact per attempt, and that's the seventh best. So you're going to the bottom of the barrel to the top 10. It's not going to be a good matchup for who? The running backs. Well, which one? I sell both of them because both these running backs are going to be involved in this game, but both these running backs are going against that Steelers defensive line. They got Tyrone Tracy, who's been playing pretty well of late. But you got Devin Singletary coming into the mix. So they're both going to begin their playing time. They're going to not get the full potential of the 20 carries that they were getting beforehand. When contacted two or fewer yards from the line of scrimmage, Singletary has earned just a 2.7 yards per carry. That's 34th overall. While Tracy has managed just 2.6 yards per carry. That's 39th overall. Among the same qualifying running backs and circumstances, Tracy ranks just 30th in rushing grade at 61.1, and Singletary ranks 59th, 52.2. With more options to choose from this week, like because there's no buys this week, the disadvantage in the trenches and the potential to cut into each other's playing time, Tracy and Singletary should be on fantasy benches this week. I do want to say uh, last week I did have a gamble of the week was Brees Hall because of the matchup, but his rushing wasn't great. But he was able to have like four receptions for like 96 yards. So that really much helped him. And I think if that's going to happen to anybody here, if anyone's going to luck out and get, you know, the receptions and the yards, and going, to, it's probably going to be Tyron Tracy if you want to take a little bit of a gamble. But if you can, try to ice both these players out of your lineups. And now I just want to do some quick hits into some additional games, ones that will have a big lopsided when it comes to offensive line and defensive line. One of them that I want to talk about is the New York Jets at New England. This is a 45% advantage for the New York Jets. They allow 21% of pressure. New England only gets 22% of the pressure. That is super low. So what we're seeing here, we saw what happened last time. Actually, the Jets like lit up the New England Patriots, and it should happen again. We're going to see Aaron Rodgers actually get some time in the pocket. And who does he have to throw the ball to? He's got his best friend, Devontae Adams, who he's got free talk about with. So, of course, they're going to be best friends. He also has uh, Garrett Wilson. So he's going to have all the time in the world to throw the ball because the New England's defensive line, even with the defensive coach, it kind of sucks. They cannot get to the quarterback. So the other one I want to talk about here is the second best of the week is the Broncos. They have a 38% advantage over uh, for the passing over the Carolina defense, which is pretty much you can start anybody against the Carolina defense when it comes to quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, kickers, coaches, Gatorade, cheerleaders, all that. You start them against the Carolina defense because they're not that great. Um, the defense of the line or the offensive line for the Denver Broncos, they only allow 26%. Pressure rate, which converts to sack only 10% of the time. That's probably one of the lowest. Look, that's that's tied down here with uh, Kansas City Chiefs. That's Patrick Mahomes. So they're only getting sacked 10% of the time. Carolina, they're only getting sacks 13% of the time on the defensive line. They're only getting 29% of the pressure. So this looks like it could be another great matchup. I know we have Javante Williams as very high this week on the rankings. Like we feel like he's going to do pretty well. But Bo Nix, you know, 
Surprisingly, Bo Nix has put up 20-point games. He has an opportunity, him and Cortland Sutton, to do, do well in this game. Now, the games with the, run, with the run advantage, the top one here is San Francisco's offensive line against the Cowboys' defensive line. The 49ers have a 62% advantage in, <laughs> the, in the run game. And we just talked about this with Jordan Mason. Right here, this one is saying that the yards before contact is 1.74. That is great. That is awesome. Runs inside the 514. That is great. That is awesome. Looks like it's one of the highest out of all the teams. And it's converted into touchdowns 36% of the time. And the Cowboys here, look how much they're giving up. They're giving up 1.51 yards per carry. It looks like it's a, the data is a little bit off from what we were talking about earlier. But, you know, it's just still the same tile. It's still the same thing. You understand the Cowboys are giving up a lot in the run game. I believe they're top five in running back scoring. They allow 27 points to running backs per game. Uh, you know, they, they're missing some key defensive lines yeah, or defense alignment. So yeah, Jordan Mason, if you have him, this is a good game for him to bounce back in. He should do well. The second game I want to look at, of course, or up here just about every week. It's a D Detroit Lions offensive line against the Tennessee Titans defensive line. And we're going back to the run game here. Look at this. 1.73 yards before contact. I can run through there and, and look good. I mean, it might take me a while to get to the line of scrimmage, but I think I could, I could do it. I could at least make it through. And the Tennessee Titans, they're actually giving up 1.15 yards. I mean, this all comes down just to the Detroit's line. They're, they have the probably the best offense line in the league. They're just a bunch of bullies. If I have Jameer Gibbs, if I had Devontae, or Dave, not Devontae, I wish I had Devontae. If I had David Montgomery, I wish I had David Montgomery. If I had David Montgomery, I would start him every week just because they're going to run the ball, and they can run the ball. They can do whatever they want back there. It doesn't matter who they're going up against. Now, that's a wrap for the offensive report for week eight. Now you know what three players to target. Now you know what three players to avoid. Plus the information, the additional games they want to be a part of or stay away. I want to do a quick recap from the last week episode. So we said to target Deontay Johnson. That did not go well. That Carolina game just went to shit in the first like two seconds. So that sucks. Jerk off. We said to target. He blew up. He had another great game. Graham Hunt. We said to target. He had two touchdowns against the 49ers. Uh, we said to ice out Pat Faramuth. He only had seven points. I do know that for sure. Demario Douglas, we said to ice out. He didn't do well, but he also got seasick. The fish and chips over there in London were not too good. And then Rashad White against the um, Baltimore Ravens. I don't think he did pretty well. And we were said to ice out him too. I do know Bur Bucky Irving, I think it was the one that had the touchdown, but Rashad White did not do well against the Ravens. So overall, I think it was pretty accurate for week seven. So every Friday night, Tyler and I do a live breaking show and answer questions from the chat. If you want to know where your players landed this week, you can click this video here and see if they were ranked high, if they're going to rank low, what you expect, what not to expect. I'll talk to you in that video. Deuces.